Welcome. In this tutorial, I want, I'd like to show you how to build a house in 3ds Max that looks kind of realistic. Houses have a lot of stuff going on in the construction, starting from the slab at the bottom, which is the concrete pad, and then you have the floor going on top of it. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on, such as insulation. You can see here the second floor support will be on this slab. I, I'm calling it slab number two and then all your um, uh, framework will go there. Around the windows and doors, there's a lot of things going on, supports, insulation, etc. And between the brick face and the actual wall of the house, there's a gap that has to be covered with this uh, trim. Um, so the rain won't go in, of course. And those are the little details that we will place. Uh, same thing on the vinyl side, there are some uh, edges, some corners and channels that keep the water from going into the house that in some cases you can't see them uh, from from the distance but mostly the roof here is made out of so many pieces and and the, these have to be covered with trim and the siding meeting and matching these these uh, parts. In the end you can add your roof to the top Again, knowing where, where it is, we'll, we'll talk about the stairway, how to go from the first floor to the second floor. And you have to land exactly on the second floor after maybe 13 or 14 steps, depending on how high your walls are. In the end, you may end up looking, uh, having a house that looks like this, uh, with some of the detail we're talking about. So to get started, get your floor plan from the internet on this site or you can use this number here to to search for the file all right well, we'll get started once you get uh, ready we're going to place a uh, change our units to inches and then we'll use on the home grid here five inches so the grid spacing is five inches you can leave the rest as it is On your materials, bring your plan, add it as a diffuse to a standard uh, material. Notice on the when you open view, you can crop only the area you need. You don't have to do this in another program. And then uh, we'll apply this map to a uh, plane on your uh, top view. Notice that the size of the plan is 52 to 57 to by 26 or so. 52 feet 2 inches by 26 inches. You can change your views so you can see the floor plan. You know, click on here and then change the view to shade it. We're going to be snapping to the grid. You can press Ctrl J to remove the brackets here. So let's start to get your AEC extended uh, material. This is a wall, five inches wide by eight feet high. So we're going to snap the grid points. Notice it starts in the center here. You can change that to start on the left or right and then go from there. Here you all have to just crawl from one you know, corner to the other. This is not exact on top of the floor plan, but it's close enough for this project. If you want it to be very exact, you would probably have to draw the floor plan to match the, uh, the grid on this uh, on 3ds Max. So we have those walls. If you wish, you can add the interior walls uh, because later you may want to work in the interior and so forth. So here we have the plan already finished. And I would suggest that from the very beginning you start organizing yourself, making layers and naming them correctly so you can remember. So uh, this way you can turn off you know, to turn on and off uh, anytime you need it. Uh, 
all at once, rather than hiding individual um, items. So now we can start drawing with a box on the uh, snap to uh, grid again, the, the base of the first floor or the slab number one. At any time you press S and the snap will be off. So with this box, which starts at five inches high, we're going to have to put dividing lines to create these steps for every step here or in the back by the entrance you have to have lines so we can cut and convert to poly and start adding these lines now in this case this line had to be happened to be just in the center which is just where we we need to separate this area so you can extrude this and sometimes you can use your snap to grid to put it exactly at the edge of the of the uh, walls. Usually the slabs are slightly larger than the floors themselves because they have to allow for uh, errors and also to uh, receive sometimes the brick uh, that may rest right on top of that. So here I'm creating the lines so we can have these steps extruded in the right places. You'll see here it's right on the edge. That's good. Now we're going to extend this area, but before I like to create these lines. Now we have this wall here so i'm trying to add this line for the wall in the center that extrudes to the outside on the other side of it for the garage area again this you can eyeball it or you can actually snap to the grid so here's that separate piece we can extend this and this for for now we'll extrude it to the first step, right there. Then we can extrude it again to the second step. Uh, two steps here. And we have one at the entrance, which the drawing can't show very well. But at the entrance, you may not have to have this. It's up to you. But I'm going to show you that just uh, you can add a little, a little bit over there. So that's the line at the front of the entrance. Now we can extrude just the garage area. All right. Now we need to add more lines to cut for the steps we're going to be building because this slab has steps towards the house. It starts at the uh, street level or whatever level it starts, and then you, you build it up to the floor, to the level of the floor of the rooms. So we need to cut the lines for the steps. Later we will extrude them. So we need to move this a little bit over here. We can make this uh, block see through so you can see the lines underneath we need to cut over here like i said this is not that important uh, you can cut it for the portico or for the entrance here in case you want to make it a little step so we're going to move those lines one side of the door and to the other side of the door here. All right, now we need to cut on the area to get into the laundry area right here.
So depending on your floor plan or on your slab, this may be a little bit tedious, but you need to put lines around the walls where the, where the uh, height of the slab is going to change. In this case, I need to put lines around the garage and the steps because um, the garage is at the uh, lowest level of, of the, uh, the street level or the, uh, um, the lowest level where, where you come from the street to the garage. So you need to cut these lines so you, we can leave the walls at a certain height and the floor of the slab and the garage at a different uh, height. Okay, I'm doing this a little bit uh, faster so we can move on. I've seen other houses built on 3ds Max that don't, they'd rather don't do any of this because they figure, well, you're not going to see the inside of the house when you, when you show the outside. Yeah, the, uh, none of this is going to be important to them. But chances are, if you're like me and I, and I love to do these uh, drawings, I will use the same house to work on the inside and I'm going to practice lighting uh, and some other things such materials, etc., to show what an interior looks like. So this is going to be useful anyway. And if you're building this for a business or to, for an architect, chances are he's going to say, show me the interior as well. So you may as well do this. So I'm not doing this 100% correct because it will take a little bit longer, but basically this is what needs to be done. So you can turn this on again, and then uh, we can see where where the walls are and where the steps are. All right, so I think we need a couple more. Right here is a small step. And we need to cut lines over here for the uh, thickness of the wall of the garage. So now you can turn on your walls to look to see if you're about right where you need to be. You can be a little bit outside the wall. All right, so you do the same thing everywhere you have a wall where the floor is going to change. And move it over just slightly outside the wall. And the entrance of the garage is, has a very tiny step in the front. We're going to work on that in a minute. So this line will be for the wall thickness, again. Somewhere there. And uh, I could be forgetting something else here. Let me double check. Well, maybe we're fine. So now we need to select the entire top of the slab and deselect the uh, area that stays at the bottom before the, the steps. Well, the lowest is going to be the garage. So you unselect all the garage floor, leave the walls selected, <clears throat> and the steps. Um, let me look over here, I think. I think the closet is a little bit farther up. Yeah. So, all you have selected here is the, the area where it's going to be raised. We're going to raise it by five inches. So we extrude five inches up that we have our first step there. On the second extrusion, we're going to deselect this step here, just leaving the, uh, the last one on top. 
So this way we have um, raised the, the two steps we needed into the floor of the house. The slab should end up being 15 inches high. All right, that's what it, was, it should look like. Now, I was looking at the area of the garage entrance, which is a very tiny step at the front here. So we're going to lower this a little bit. What we need to do is create this small step here. So we're going to add a, a line. We're going to lower this. So by adding a couple of lines here, we can create a small step. And that's good enough. So our slab is done. And we can continue with the uh, second floor. So very similar to the first floor, the second floor slab has to be traced on exactly on top of the, ex of the previous uh, floor plan you made or, or the walls. Since it uh, was done on the grid, you can snap on the grid again. So you can start by creating a line. We're going to extrude this later because this looks different from, from the first slab, which is the first slab was solid. This one has an opening here. This is open to below. So it's an opening that will allow us to see the floor below. And check here, this so you can continue drawing. I will cut out a hole inside. So I, I know you can't see this very well because the line is white and the, and the drawing is white, but in a second I'll show you. All right, let me move this a little bit. We're going to either extrude or we can convert it to a poly. Make it five inches high for now. Okay, just to show you. In the end, you should have 10 inches high over here, so I'm just doing five for now, because the uh, thickness of that slab has to be um, either 10 or 12, depending on how, how tall your, your house is going to be. All right, now we can, once you're done with this, and you put it in all together, it should look like this. Thank you for watching this part.